Have you ever wondered what makes bodies tick? Are you creating the sexual reality you desire and require? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? What if your fantasies are not as strange as you thought they were? What if you could learn to be kinder to your body and kinder to others' bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Have you lost your mojo and wondered where to find it? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, Body Whisperer, Melitza Yelenich. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melitza Yelenich, and I don't know about you guys, but where I am in the world right now, it is really hot, and we have not had rain for days and days and days and days. If you guys know anything about this show, I'm all about the wetness. I like things wet, and I like things fun and slippery, and this is so not slippery and so not wet, so I'm just asking everybody, what can we be and do to change all that? I'm so excited to have some wetness. Wet all night long. That's what I would like. I don't know about you guys. So if this is your very first time listening to this show, congratulations for falling into this. Because it might have been by accident. It might have been on purpose. I'm not sure. But I'm so glad you're here to listen. Um, I'm somebody who works with bodies all the time. I'm not a sex therapist, not a sexologist. I love bodies and I love pleasure. And one of my targets is to, to bring to the world ever expanding more ways to receive pleasure and ease with your body, whether it's with a partner or whether it's by yourself. Um, so one of the things that I do is I, I do work with bodies and I actually work with some somatic body work, which includes movement of bodies to release stuff literally from like your skeletal system outward so that your body can have more ease. And I also have been playing with different kinds of energy work for almost 20 years now, uh, professionally for almost 20 years um, because you know what every single one of us has a capacity to do energy work it's a matter of um, choosing it being aware of it so you know when you're a kid and you get hurt and you put your you fall you can put your hand on the scrape well that right there is a pretty good indicator that your body has a knowing that you have a capacity to heal it so that like instinct of putting on something to have it feel better right there that's your knowing saying hey I got a capacity for healing so for those of you who are like, yeah, this kind of healing stuff isn't for me, it actually is because you've been doing it your whole life. So welcome to the rest of us and the rest of this kind of world. Um, so today on this interesting adventure that I have on this show, and I'm not sure what episode I'm on, but I think I'm darn near 100 episodes any day now. And when I, if I've missed it, damn, but if I, I'm on it, woohoo, and I'll be checking that later. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, that's 100 live episodes, that is, so, uh, or new ones that I haven't refreshed. So I'm so excited to invite you guys today to the topic of contraception and misconception. So the funny thing to me about the word misconception is that it's like missed conception, which is actually what you're aiming for when you use contraception. You're actually aiming to miss the conception of something. Woohoo! So they kind of go in line with each other. One of um, the things that kind of got me curious about this topic was I was doing research for another show which sparked a memory that I had. Um, so one of the other shows I did recently was about weird sex um, facts. And one of the weird sex facts was that the Egyptians used to use crocodile dung and honey as like a plug to avoid having sperm go up and into cervix. Uh, it was kind of like a, just a plug. So it would just like stop everything. Honestly, I think it was the smell that had the guy walk away before he even put his penis in there, but that's just my interesting point of view. So I wanted to really talk about this topic of contraception in a broader scope, not just about, um, you know, avoiding maybe children where, you know, we're talking about birth control pills and all of that. I'd really like to look at um, contraception as something of increasing your awareness because your body your body is pretty darn smart and your body when you are in tune with your body and you're really aware of your body your body will fully know when the person that's like 
you know, desiring copulating with you um, is either carrying STDs or is really desiring um, getting you pregnant or you're just really desiring getting them pregnant. It's one of those things. It's like you actually, when you are keenly aware of the subtleties of the energies uh, that you be, you can be totally aware of, oh, that there's an STD there, I'm not choosing that, or there's that, I'm not choosing that, or, oh, my body just woke up an STD from 20 years ago, so I'm going to not do that with so-and-so. It's really about having awareness in the moment, because a lot of things like STDs can go dormant for years and years and years. Uh, Things like chlamydia for example can be dormant for 20 years even crazier when you look at homeopathy um, there are different things called miasms Um, and those are ways that we've carried different diseases um, into our bodies create different anomalies we'll say so for example um, I may never show a, a history of having syphilis however possibly seven generations ago in my family somebody had syphilis which created a marker on the dna that got passed on and on and on and on now we're not actually victims of our dna i know i just blew your mind that that's a whole other conversation though we're gonna kind of go with today let's just say your body has uh, dna that's been passed on generationally and it you know may have a father lineage who had uh, syphilis say you've got a lot of alcoholism and mental um, uh, we'll say like mental incapacities like somebody who might have been bipolar like anywhere where people have been like labeled with like mental instability a lot of homeopathically people have been viewed with different miasms and one of them includes syphilitic miasms so if we look at that And then say your mother comes from a herpetic miasm where that's herpes being traveled down throughout the generations. And you throw those two miasms together, you end up with something completely different. But that's actually where our bodies start to have so many influences from so many places that we start to own as ours that we actually start to create a lack of ease in our body. That's another word for lack of ease. That would be dis-ease. So, guys, I'm not saying that you've got syphilis. I'm not saying you got herpes. But the thing is, you may actually be genetically carrying some kind of thing in your DNA. And the beauty of it is, with awareness, um, is it possible to change it? I just want you to check. Like, check with yourself energetically. Is it possible to change any of these genetic um, anomalies? I'm aware of something. I'd like you to check on your awareness yourself on that. So when I ask you to do that, it's like check what's really light for you. If it's like, heck, yeah, that's possible. Be aware that you can change it. If it's like, yeah, no way, you know, you might want to check and ask some more questions like, hey, okay, is that my point of view? Is is there actually something else possible here? The beauty of it all is keep asking more questions and more questions and more questions. So I don't want to get too far off track here, but a lot of contraception is either the avoidance of a baby or the avoidance of an STD, STI. Well, what is an STI? That's a sexually transmitted infection, pretty much a sexually transmitted disease. Not and, And for whatever reason, we have different terminology for it. So let's go with contraception right now for the sake of maybe uh, not getting pregnant well a lot of things historically people have been you know choosing to not try and get pregnant so that they can you know copulate and not have to worry about whether it's going to um you know the, women could have gotten killed for being pregnant outside of marriage there's so many reasons why um women would be avoiding birth there could be economic stuff going on in their area um they just can't give birth to a baby because there's just no food happening i mean rabbits are way smarter than us they'll just not hump each other when there is no food they actually are aware enough to know not to choose that because they know it won't sustain life us we're a totally different breed but you know we have to come up with interesting other things Some of the most interesting myths going out there right now are that if you don't have an orgasm, you won't have a baby. Well, that's an interesting pile of poo. 
I don't know about you, but I know an awful lot of women out there who have never had an orgasm, and yet they have had conception. Funny thing is, is you do require men to have an orgasm in order to have a baby. I just want to be clear for those of you who weren't sure. Yes, an orgasm is required, but not by the woman, just by the man. He just requires, not, he really requires climaxing, you know. If he wants to skip the orgasm altogether and just go from limp to cli- to climax, cool. I don't know. Maybe he's got a capacity for that. Or he could just be like, you know, limp, hard, orgasmic energy, climax, boom, and then baby. Uh, lots of options. Another cute one is that breastfeeding equals birth control. And I personally know several women who have been breastfeeding and have gotten pregnant. So no, your hormones don't shut off. No, it doesn't confuse your body. Uh, if you look historically, um, I'll use my grandmother as an example. My grandmother nursed her children. That's what they did in the 19, you know, 30s wartime. There wasn't a lot of food going on in the former Yugoslavia. And she had 10 children um, altogether within 12 years. The chances of her actually nursing a child and conceiving at the same time were really high. I'm not sure where that myth came about, but it's actually completely untrue. Um, And so for those of you who are thinking right now, no, 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 I'm safe. I'm breastfeeding. There's no way I can get pregnant. Not true. So please still choose to be aware and not be silly. And please do ask questions. Hey, you know, if I have sex right now, will I conceive? Your body knows. And also, hey, if I copulate with this person, if they stick their penis into my vagina or their penis into my anus or their penis into my mouth or I stick my vagina into their mouth or my vagina on their vagina or whatever combination you're looking at, and you're like, hey, if I choose that, will I get an STD or an STI? And your body says yes, listen to it. Please be aware. Please listen to your body. It's probably going to scream at you later if you don't. So, you know, when your body actually tells you that, just go, okay, cool. Thanks, body. I won't choose it because you don't have to choose it. Now, here's one that I have actually never heard, but it was on the list. Drink up the semen and you'll become more fertile. Well, who knew I should be popping out babies like crazy in that rate. Um, drinking up semen. I actually have a total side story on this before we go to break. And the story goes, I was actually considering um, opening up a totally different kind of business because I'm forever creating new businesses. And I thought it'd be really fun to create a business that was like, um, you know, totally different, um, protein shake related. And it was more like, uh, you know, guys line up on a bar and they would be, you know, naked because it's more fun. And during this process, you can pick your dude to blow the load into your protein shake. And I was going to call it shake and shake. So he gets to shake. You get your shake. It's called shake and shake. I own it for any of you out there who think you're going to steal that idea because And don't worry, everybody's tested. There's no STDs going around. It's all about the protein shake, ladies and gentlemen. So that's my brilliant idea for for this hour. I'm sure I'll come up with more, but uh, that was actually a while ago I came up with that one. And, And thank you. I do feel like there's pure brilliance in it because you know what? I think it's both there's an element of entertainment that happens there, um, nutrition. There's like love going around the world, satisfaction. There's pleasure. I think they just incorporate so many things that I'm like, I totally um, am all for, right? So yay, shake and shake. One day we will have a shake and shake in the world um, if it doesn't already exist. But, you know, Apparently, drinking that semen will get you more pregnant. So if that's the case, and I doubt that highly, um, it could also be used as a fertility clinic. Why not? How does it get any better than that? On that crazy and insane note, I'm going to let you guys just like go, whoa, for a few minutes while we head off to this commercial break here on The Pleasure Zone. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. 
Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question. Always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S., Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at A2Zen.FM. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. It's my pleasure to have you here in the zone with me. I'm really excited that you guys are listening to this crazy, wacky show. Uh, if it's your first time, if it's your hundredth time, I'm just so excited to um, be able to offer information to all of you that maybe you don't have the time to go research that I just do choose to go research because this kind of stuff makes me happy and excited. So our topic today is contraception and misconception. And one of the um, things that I came across was some crazy, they were funny, crazy birth control myths. Um, number four, oh n- yeah, number four, like I'm only on number four out of 15. And I got a whole other list of crazy old things that people used to use. So bathing or peeing immediately after sex will allow the sperms to be washed away. Holy lifting. I think this is from 1950, maybe. Um, this is not accurate, nor is it true. And, you know, you can try and wash up all your leg, but okay, let's just consider this. You have something in your vagina. It's called a sperm. Then you go and you shove some water in there, like flush system, pushing something. In, like if you were to pour water down into your tap, into your pipes, to, to, you know, try and unclog it, that water is going to actually create a force that pushes something a little higher. Chances of it actually encouraging it to, you know, go a little higher and a little further in are way more likely than having it wash it out. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm one of those women who has this capacity to, like, hold on to come in my body for, oh, literally hours and My husband thinks it's hilarious because sometime in the middle of the night, I'll just go, oh, and he's like, came out, didn't it? I'm like, yep, and there's puddle all over me because you know what? Most of the time, um, I could hold that stuff in for like probably a day if I wanted to, but I try and actually relax enough to have it fall. So I'm sure there's a lot more of us out there that just have these like tighter muscles that are actually like sucking it up and sucking it in. So chances of it uh, washing away, not so high, peeps. So here's another one. The pill works with immediate effect. No, it doesn't. Just like any medication, it does not work with immediate effect. 
uh, really highly recommended, and this isn't actually in the article, to wait at least three cycles until you actually start to see it be effective. I know so many people who have even been on the pill for years and have gotten pregnant. Um, why is that? Because you know what? If your body really truly desires to get pregnant and that being really do, truly desires to come through, they're going to, regardless of what you're trying to you know, not have or what you're trying to use to stop it. When a being would like to show up, they're going to show up. The one way that you can stop that is to not have the sperm actually anywhere near your vagina. And even at that, I swear to God, there's times where you just like, you think you're just sleeping and you wake up pregnant and you're like, what happened? It can be that extreme. But <laughs> that yet either, maybe you're drugged. It's whatever. That's cool. Whatever it is. So now here's a cute one. And this is one that most guys are like so sure is true because they really like to think this is true. Pulling out before ejaculate before ejaculation keeps all the sperm out. No, no, it doesn't. Pre-cum also has sperm. So even if your partner pulls out or your lover or your whatever pulls out and they didn't come yet, guess what, ladies? You can still have those little baby sperm swimming around inside of you. So just be aware, the pull-out method is not the smartest, safest method. Condoms are not replaceable. Oh, what? This is the craziest one ever. Apparently, people think balloons can work. I'm not even going to talk about that one. What the heck? Is this like grade four sex talk? That is sad and crazy. No, that is so messed I can't believe it's even on the list. No, condoms cannot be replaced with balloons. Just same. Okay, here's another one that is obviously a wives' tale. Perhaps people do this, and I'm not sure where they come up with this stuff, but apparently if you put your leg in the air for 20 minutes after sex, it increases your pregnancy chances. No, people, that's not true. Just like if you put your legs down for 20 minutes after sex decreases your chances of being pregnant. No, it's not true. I, I'm just telling you guys this. I'm not even asking for your awareness because if you don't have this awareness, I'm here to kick your ass. All right. Here's a cute and inaccurate one too, but I've also heard some cute and, and inaccurate ones about this. So being on top reduces your chances of getting pregnant. I've also heard the myth, you know, Europeans have a lot of myths, you know, and one of them is like, if you do it on top, you'll have a boy. If you do it on the bottom, you'll have a girl. Oh, or I could have those mixed up. I have no idea. Or, you know, if you do it uh, on a certain saint day, you got a better chance of getting pregnant. Oh my God. The superstitions that go on with sex are unbelievable. Superstitions, people. These are not facts. All right. So no to being on top. That will not reduce your chance of getting pregnant. Sperm is sperm. Your vagina is your vagina. If your parts are working and that baby wants to come through, you are having a baby. Just telling you. It's that simple, people. So now, this is a cute one, too, and it's probably based from, maybe Mormons wrote this one. I'm not sure. And that goes out to my friend, Danielle, who used to be a Mormon. Missionary style is the only road that leads to pregnancy. No, missionary style is not the only road that leads to pregnancy. Because you know what, people? I know people who only ever have its doggy style, and they've had babies. So guess what? Not true. And it's not the most easiest way to have a baby either. It's not like the guaranteed method. Wow, this is funny. It's kind of like in the same line of lie on your back, put your legs in the air. Kind of like that, just a little more crazy. Now, here come some top-notch insane ones. Here comes cough syrup aids conception. I have no idea how or why somebody came up with that. The only reason I could say that that is even remotely possible is if your partner, for example, had a really nasty cough and you were avoiding being near them and they took cough syrup and then you were like, oh, I can be near you now so I don't catch your cold so we can have sex, that would increase your chance of pregnancy. The cough syrup itself, uh, no. So, wow, no. <laughs> and here's another sweet one. 
if you'd like to have twins, you should eat a lot of yams. Now, I think that must be southern. But they also probably were going through a lot of babies at the time. And I have no idea. Yams do have a lot more. They do increase certain hormones in your body. That does not guarantee twins. So all it does is yams can start to regulate your hormones. However, they are not going to change the twin factor up. Okay, so they say that some people think that there's no no reason to use contraception during periods. Well, you know what the truth is, is I actually got pregnant with my daughter during my period. My just like right after, it was like the last day of it or something. It was like somewhere my cycle got really interesting and I got pregnant like literally then. I remember because I know the day, I looked at the time, um, I wasn't like having a lot of sex then, like three times a year maybe, so I know exactly when it happened. And my midwives and my nurse practitioner insisted that I was incorrect, and I'm like, no, I know to the day and the minute. So I could tell them when my date was, and they were like, no, 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 according to your last period. I'm like, we're not going with that, we're going with the last time I had sex, which was then. And whatever that was, they were pretty darn sure that I somehow maintained holding on to live sperm inside my body for like two weeks. I'm like, no, I didn't. I'm good, but I know when I got pregnant because I know when that being showed up. Just saying. All right. So periods, no periods, whatever. Use contraception if you don't want to have babies and if you don't want to get STIs and STDs. Your period doesn't stop you from getting an STD. I know some of you might even be thinking that's possible, but no, it's not. Your period is just your uterus shedding. It doesn't mean that your uterus is now uh, totally healed and it's had some kind of like massive you are healed session. It is, uh, no, it's just shedding. And that all is. It doesn't get rid of STDs and STIs or, and it doesn't stop you from ever having the chance of being pregnant. Now, here's a cute one. Apparently, drinking lots of water and massaging your tummy after sex prevents pregnancy. I drink lots of water all the time, and that's not true. That's all I have to say. And now here's a really cute one, and this might actually, and some people might actually believe this because it sounds like a little European cuckoo-ness, so I'm going to just mention it, that Schweppes bitter lemon is apparently a contraceptive. Wow. So... For those of you out there who actually are buying any of this stuff as contraception and you want to try it, feel free. I'm not going to stop you. I'd really like you, though, to sit back and go, truth, if I use this, is it going to create the results I'm looking for? Is it going to create the baby I'm looking for? Is it going to create that whatever you're looking for? If you are looking to have a child, there are so many more interesting and fun, energetic things you can do for that. That's going to be on a different episode. This is about misconception and about contraception. So, you know, a lot of people like throughout history have, it's it's interesting. It's like there are times historically where people have been actually literally told that they have to have babies. Um, in Quebec, uh, the province of Quebec in Ontario in the 1960s, people were literally getting harassed if they didn't have enough children. So there was a huge influx of babies being born in the 1950s and 60s. Um, it wasn't just in Quebec, but there, I mean, we noticed that in Canada. And there was, you know, throughout the world, um, there was a great Catholic push on having more and more and more children. Historically, having these more children would actually increase your chances of having uh, a productive farm or whatever, but we don't have these farms now. So, you know, contraception is, is not bad. So anywhere that you actually thought it was or you were killing off a baby or something like that by having sex, chances are you're probably not listening to this show, but if you are and you just happened upon it, you're actually not killing anything by using contraception. That thing, that be being has not chosen the body yet, is not in there yet. So um, using every um, method you can, have fun with it. But really try and stick with some of the ones that are um, may have more scientific uh, results. And also use your awareness is, I would say, the greatest um, thing that I could use as a, a proven way to get results. So when we come back, we're going to talk about some crazy historical stuff that people used to do 
try and avoid having babies in STDs and STIs when we come back from break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at A2Zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melit Zayelanich, and today our conversation is about contraception and misconception. If you missed the first part, we talked about all kinds of silly things that people actually believe will stop them from getting pregnant or help them to get pregnant. Um, I love looking at things from a historical um, standpoint because, to me, there's something so fun about um, you know different cultural beliefs uh, and sex and all kinds of stuff that goes on all around the world. So I bring to you today the 10 most terrifying contraceptives throughout history. Now, here's a special one. This one's really... Um, there's. I'm going to place a warning on this segment of the show. Those of you who are faint of heart, those of you who are children and get disturbed by talking about strange animal things, for those of you who just can't really wrap your mind around things that would make the average person barf. Um, that's about what we're going to be talking about, you lucky dogs. Okay, cool. So one of the contraceptives during medieval dark ages in Europe, um, now this one's attractive. I want you guys to brace yourselves. Okay, good. Okay, so one of the things that they would do was get weasel balls. That's right, the balls of a weasel and strap them to the woman's leg. Now, I get that most of you are going, what the hell? But for those of you who do know a little bit about the Dark Ages, you'll know that people feared magic. And the person who would actually be doing this would be the local magician. Uh, he would get that weasel, he'd be the medicine man, he'd, and he'd get that weasel and he'd cut those nuts off and strap them to the girl's legs. Now, just kind of like that crocodile dung, I'm thinking, if I'm a guy and I'm approaching a girl and I'm looking up that skirt and I go, holy Jesus, Batman, what the hell is that? Uh, I'm thinking I might walk away just for the sake of what the heck are those weasel balls tied to your leg for? I'm not quite sure what you're doing with that. Um, I'd be a little more creeped out if he starts like licking those balls or rubbing them or trying to like get them, you know, excited or something, you know, that 
would concern me too. There's a whole lot of factors that would make me kind of go, I would attach weasel balls to my leg for what? All right. So I personally, I, I don't know if I did in another lifetime. I think it makes me laugh so hard that the chances are I either tied those testicles to somebody or I had them tied to me because, whew, that's um, really interesting stuff. So that's number 10 weirdness. And I did already mention to you guys the diaphragms made of crocodile poo that the ancient Egyptians used. It wasn't just crocodile poo. They also added honey to it because nice, just a little sweet, sweet and poop. And, you know, that's not a flavor that a lot of my my favorite, you know, uh, foodies talk about shit and sweet. It's more, they usually talk about salty, spicy and sweet. But this is a whole other category, shit and sweet and that apparently was used for a long time but there is no evidence of who started it or why they started it or how effective it was they they claim that there was some effectiveness because they got the idea that if they created a blockage somehow that would stop the sperm from going but oh jesus i can't even imagine that's poop that's poop guys in your vagina just saying that's not the best idea it's like you would do that for what? And the bacteria, I get they maybe weren't aware of all the bacteria. Maybe even crocodiles have worms in there and their poop. I don't know. I don't I don't want that in my vagina. Right? All right. Thank God it's not ancient Egypt. I'd vomit. Now here's a very nice attractive one. And this is from us Canadians. I know you guys are going to be impressed by this one. It involves beaver testicles with alcohol. So in 16th century Canada, that would be like right when the French were coming and they kind of started to um, hang out in the area that is the Quebec area. Um, and they started to settle there. So around then, Canadians agreed that the testicle of small furry animals were key to pregnancy prevention. Whew. And they also felt that it was far more advanced than those superstitions that Europeans had. The uh, brilliant idea that they had was to stick the beaver testicle um, into moonshine. Well, I'm thinking just giving the guy the moonshine itself would have him be knocked out. Therefore, he couldn't perform. I think there's something going on there. The hooch uh, itself, not the cooch, the hooch was strong and the beaver balls were ground up into a fine powder, all to ensure the rampant Canadian sex would have no unfortunate side effects. Well, I would think that the, more than anything else, it had to do with uh, not the guy not being able to actually have sex because he was too drunk. Okay, that's more likely. All right. The next one, mercury. Isn't this beautiful? That's right. We're going to use a little poison today. The delicious mercury from the good old days. It was considered a cure for almost anything. Well, heck, you'd get rid of anything because you were dying and you would end up having some brain malfunction. Absolutely wonderful. To the future, uh, I don't know how we any of us survived, but to the future that we have, I'm so glad that we are not using mercury like we were even in the 70s, sticking it in people's teeth. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to be using it for in the future, but I really hope that we kind of get that it's a poison. Oh, so several thousand years ago in China, uh, somebody came up with the idea of using mercury as birth control. And you want to know why? You want to know what the reasoning is? Because they could. So women would do some shots of mercury. Yes, shots of mercury. Uh, right. Does that make any sense? Right. They'd be maybe sterile because they were half dead right or brain damage or maybe their kidneys were failing uh i really don't think that their main problem was having babies or not having babies um because you know what holy god mercury jesus okay that was a cute one cute and dangerous facts from around the world the next one which is extra fun is diaphragms that are made of gold and silver and they kind of look like thimbles they weren't really very um, useful or accurate because they weren't shaped to the Mormon cervix so they couldn't really fit in there. 
Um, but I do like to think that because of their design that like if a guy was penetrating you um, and he created like a little suction with the um, the symbol because you know you'd stick your finger into the symbol so you could insert it into the cervix so that you could kind of stick your finger back into the symbol so you could pull it out of the cervix but if he actually created a little suction there with that symbol it would come out with like a little hat on top that'd be kind of cute so you know lots of lots of great things there the thing is i don't know like if they couldn't actually get those things out of them uh the chances of getting all kinds of infections were really really high so the infections might have led to lack of fertility, um, you know, toxic shock syndrome, uh, just bacterial infections alone, um, just wild. So, yeah, whew. things people did just so they could have sex and not get bebes. And the funny thing is so much of it has to do with the bebes. So many of them were not even really that concerned about, you know, the different STDs going around which fascinates me. Um, this one is more, I would say, from the Victorian times. Well, this one doesn't really say that on there, but um, animal intestines. And it, I think this one is maybe only that people are aware of um, because they still use a lamb. Um, there is a version that people who are allergic to latex or any kind of stuff like that. Um, a friend of mine, when we were in high school, she couldn't use latex, so she actually had to use the animal version of condoms, not the most effective, actually highly ineffective, but it was an option um, and very expensive. So it's, you know, one of those things. Um, it did something, but I'm not sure quite what. So they they did have condoms and that kind of started. Now, the, the thing about the animal intestines uh, was I actually watched a show on this on the Victorian era medicine is that um, they would really like it was a really long process they would have to get this they'd have to soak it in certain the intestines and certain solvents get as much bacteria out as possible um, it would take days of cleaning and drying and then um, they would create the size you know and hang them on the line in the back of the apothecary so they could dry so they could be used um, but you know, the hygiene then still wasn't all that great, and the stuff they were using to kill off um, the bacteria from the poop from the from the intestines of of these sheep uh, wasn't that great either. So there was chances of a lot of um, again more disease actually being passed on through the use of this stuff with with uh, fecal matter in it than anything else. So. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to take you guys off to break as I break you into some more crazy things from the past. And when we come back, we'll discuss more of that and how crazy are we. And hopefully when we look back from the future to now, we'll go, wow, weren't we retarded thinking we should use that? Well, that's my word of the hour. <laughs> so when we come back from break, I'll be talking more about that here on The Pleasure Zone. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show, with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. 
What if there are no dumb questions? Or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Amelia Tsayanich. Today, I've been talking about contraception and misconception. And boy, there's been a lot of misconception in the last few centuries. Misconception due to a lot of weird stuff we've been using and trying to kill ourselves in the process of not having babies. So, yes, we've been misconceived, that's for sure. One of the other ones on the list that I found is diaphragms of opium. Please do not try this at home. Um, This is like... People have been trying to use opium for everything uh, over the ages. And, of course, why not try and stick it in a vagina? Because what else do you do with opium? Let's try that. So, uh, you know, if you are, you know, sitting at home and you have to be really into drugs, please do not stick opium into your woman's vagina to see if that will stop her from having babies. Because, you know, smoking it alone can get you a little... But sticking it in your vagina and absorbing it into your bloodstream, not such a good idea. Just saying. Now, here's one that's both creative and almost logical. Almost logical, guys. In the 1700s, um, they, you know, somebody started to realize that those crocodile poops and those little metal things that they were trying to stick into the vagina were just not working to try and stop having babies. So would cut citrus in half. Now, Citrus is not cheap. I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but, you know, the fact that um, people were, were like, severely lacking vitamin C um, and would have been actually probably better to stick that vitamin C of the lemon into their mouth and into their vagina, um, you know, that, just saying. Um, and it was not cheap. They would have to bring it from Africa, from South America, from all over the world to European countries. So taking half a lemon and shoving it up your vagina was like one really kind of expensive way of trying to have uh, contraception. Although there was some, um, you know, logic base to it in the future that you could look at is that um, the acid from it would actually kill off, could possibly kill sperm to the acidity levels. So there might be something to it, but really I don't want to stick a lemon in my vagina and I don't recommend you guys do that either. Um, even if you do like it smelling like Mr. Clean in there. So here's one that was actually used up until World War One, World War Two, First World War. Um, that people would drink the water from blacksmiths. Um, tank like they so you know when a blacksmith is making their stuff and then they cool it down in this water well apparently women would go and just ask for that water and they would drink it um probably the lead in it was not only create mental health issues uh, it was probably also affecting them you know between liver problems kidney problems oh my god neurological problems um there were actually women were like asking to work in lead factories so they could be sterile so Mm, it's interesting they were aware of it but they just I don't think we're aware of how highly toxic it was and now here's one that isn't that old because Coca-Cola hasn't been around that long but the Coca-Cola douche so we're really not that smart either so not too long ago um, maybe even yesterday <laughs> there was uh, you know people were not just drinking Coca-Cola but they were douching with it so yes the belief was that the carbonation and sugar would be effective at stopping pregnancy and also turning a vagina into a syrupy, caffeinated horror show, of course. Can you only imagine? Ugh. So I'm thinking that when they created Coca-Cola, the intention was not to stick the bottle up your vagina, even though it has a lovely shape and it might work. And I have seen it in a movie called Nymphomaniacs. She was like sticking bottles in her vagina not so smart you can break them that could hurt 
uh, just saying, uh, I don't know about you guys, but the chances of that, you know, Coca-Cola creating some kind of, boy, <laughs> just blows my mind that people come up with this stuff. So I'm so glad you guys have joined me today on my crazy wild adventures into contraception and misconception. And really, one of the things that I didn't mention that I'd like to mention is that, you know, we spend so much of our time as beings on this planet looking to create things, looking to create business, money, relationships. We're always forever looking to create things. And then we're so cute that we spend so much time looking at ways to not actually conceive things. There's this interesting dichotomy going on so after all those crazy things that we looked at you know especially put some shit into it put some of this into it try and plug it up add a little acidity you know what it really comes down to i think energetically when i compile all of it together is if you'd like to conceive something in your life if you'd like to actually receive and conceive something in your life what if you're kinder and gentler to your body and if you'd like to not conceive things in your life do you actually require doing shitty things to your body like putting poop in it or sticking metal objects in it or sticking half a lemon in it. I'm just saying maybe a little bit more kindness, a little more awareness, a lot more awareness. Using things that, you know, have a higher chance of working like condom, um, even though they're not 100% effective, I bet you they're a heck of a lot more effective than cow dung or even crocodile dung or anything like that. So, uh, or, you know, weasel testicles. So please look at, for you, what contraception works for you. For me, for example, the birth control pill is has been not so much my friend in the past. It doesn't really work with my body, but other forms of conception um, do. So, uh, or not conception, sorry, of to actually like not conceive. So, um, if you're looking at anything like that, please ask your body um, if this form works for you, if that's going to be the most effective for you. So whether it's condom, spermicide, the pill, diaphragm, um, any of those things that you're looking at, you know, um, even to the point of like looking at getting your tubes tied or for guys, you know, like anything you're looking at um, to alter your body in order to not get pregnant, ask if it's going to be effective because I know people who have gone through all those um, methods as well. And under every single method of trying to avoid pregnancy, people have gotten pregnant. Now, I'm more concerned about the uprise of STDs on the planet because of lack of awareness, you know, choosing stupidity. Um, I really would like you guys to be more aware in general and really um, be aware of your body, be aware of others' bodies. And just because, you know, you were tested a few years ago or a few months ago and your test came up clear, remember to keep going back and get tested. Um, because you know what? Bodies can have things fall asleep for years and years and years and years and years. And so they might wake up, they might be asleep, but if you at least can have some information about that in advance, you do something about it so that you can have a more conscious sex life, you can have a more kind to your body and to others' bodies sex life. Um, that's really what it's all about, right? We don't need to go around um, creating havoc uh, on the planet. It's already being created. So I want to thank you all for listening. Um, thank you all for joining me today. If you'd like uh, more information about me, you can find it at www.melitzajelinek.com. And uh, you might actually see a link to some new sex toys I'll be selling on there as well. So look for that in the next few days. I'd love to have you purchase fun, amazing things to play with in the bedroom. And you can use condoms on them too if you're using them on more than one person. Have a great night. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melissa Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.